Okay, I feel bad. I actually lied a little because uh, uh, to follow up remainder theorem, I actually want to teach you a shortcut to long division and then we'll talk about factoring cubics. So uh, hopefully you don't skip this lesson uh, because we're trying to save ourselves time, okay? So synthetic division is going to really save us time uh, when we do our homework questions because hopefully you've noticed that long division, it's not bad, it's just really time consuming. Okay, um, so when you look at the homework solutions that I do, I don't I don't do long division very often unless the question specifically asks me to do long division. Uh, but generally, I use synthetic division. And in fact, there's even another shortcut later down the road which renders synthetic division not very useful. Okay, so really, I'd argue there's long division, which is pro probably the the most cumbersome, and then there's synthetic division. And then there's this secret method that I have. Okay, so uh, let's just uh, learn uh, synthetic division. So before I begin with synthetic division, I generally only use synthetic division when my divisor is in the form of x minus k, okay? So I need coefficient of x to be one. Now, if it's not one, I generally advise students not to perform, like uh, use synthetic division. I mean, you still can do it, I just highly advise against it because a lot of students get the wrong answer. Okay, so I'll show it to you, but I just, I would really uh, be cautious. Okay, so find the quotient when you divide by 4x cubed minus 5x squared plus 3x minus 7, uh, when you divide by x minus 2. Okay, so I'm actually going to show you the long division and the synthetic division side by side so you see the how it works, okay? Because uh, it's, it's important to, to see what you're doing and how synthetic division works. Okay, so you can take your time doing a long division. So it's gonna be four x squared to get four x cubed minus eight x squared. Be careful, this is negative negative, so it's positive. Plus three x. Subtract, subtract, boom, 11. Okay, so your quotient is actually 4x squared plus 3x plus 9. So I'm going to do a side-by-side -side comparison. This time, I'm going to do synthetic division. So I'll write it down, and then I'll show you where I'm getting these numbers from. Okay. Okay. So 4, negative 5, 3, and negative 7, these are the coefficients of my dividend, okay? And of course, the constant term. Now, here I have two. Where did I get two? Two is from the divisor of x minus two. You can think of as uh, same as the remainder theorem. What makes your divisor equal to zero? And that's where you're gonna sub in, okay? So I'm gonna do the long division. Oh, sorry, I'm gonna do the synthetic division, and then we're gonna do a side-by-side -side comparison uh, and match up the numbers. So how you do synthetic is you bring the first uh, value down four, okay, and then you multiply. So four times two is eight, and then you add, okay, that's why I have the addition sign here, negative five plus eight is three, and then I multiply again, two times three is six, and then I add, and then I multiply again, and then I add, and I circle the last number. Okay, so why am I like, by the way, Four, three, and nine. These represents these represent the coefficients of your quotient. Okay, of course it's in standard form. So this is the x squared term coefficient, x uh, term coefficient, and the constant term. So why am I allowed to just bring down the four? Why is it that the coefficient of your quotient, the leading coefficient of your quotient, matching the leading coefficient of your dividend? Because well. It's one here, okay? One times what will give me four? Of course, four, okay? What else will it be? So no matter what this value is, okay, let's say it's eight, then guess what? Your leading coefficient of your divisor has to be eight as well. So that's why I just bring it down. Whatever the value, excuse me, whatever the value is, I just bring it down. And then why do I multiply? Well, that's the next step here. You multiply and you get negative eight. Now the tricky part here is 
I added here. Okay, in synthetic division, I'm adding. And in long division, I'm subtracting. Wait a minute. Well, I'm adding over here because I'm manipulated with the divisor. Here, it's x minus 2. Okay, but when I, I write in synthetic division, I change it to a plus 2. Now, if you love subtracting, okay, what you can do is you'd still subtract. Okay, you could do keep it as minus here, uh, but then you have to change 2 to a negative 2. But I think students are much better at adding than, than subtracting. That's why I change it to 2 and keep it as a plus here. So anyways, so I see um, 8 here for the synthetic division, but here is negative 8 because I switched the signs, right? This is 4 times 2, 4 times positive 2. This is f uh, 4 times negative 2. That's why it's negative 8 here, and this is positive 8 here. But to get the same answer, I can add, and here you subtract. So you still get 3, you still get 3. And like I said, the quotient uh, will match up. Okay, The coefficients will match up. So to get a 3 here, you have to get a 3 here because you want to multiply the 3x squared. And that only works out because the coefficient of the x term is 1. That's why I told you for synthetic division, your divisor has to be in the form of x minus k. If it's not, then you have to, you have to do some manipulation. Okay, so anyways, it basically repeats itself from there. So you, um, you add again, uh, and here you subtract it, and then you multiply, you add, and here you subtract it, and you add again, oh sorry, you multiply, and then you add again, you multiply it, and then you subtract it. Okay, so really take your time, look at it, but um, it's really the exact same steps, but it's much more condensed because I don't have to write the variables and the exponents. All I'm writing are the coefficients. Okay, so therefore, uh, quotient is 4x squared plus 3x plus 9. Oh, uh, the last number, I circle it just to make sure I don't confuse this with the quotient. This is the remainder. Okay, so let's try again. So this time I'm not going to use um, long division. I'm just going to jump straight to synthetic. But if you want, you can do another side-by-side -side comparison. I find that it really helps. Now be careful here. I tried to trick you. I put the terms out of order and I, uh, I'm missing an x squared term. So, oops, that's not negative, that's positive. Okay, so 1, negative 2, so the 0 for the x squared term, 13x, so it's 13, and then minus 6. And here I'm going to put a negative 2 because I prefer to add. Like I said, if you love subtracting, sure, just write a plus 2 here. Okay, so bring down 1, multiply, 1 times negative 2 is negative 2, add is negative 4, 8, 0 plus 8, and then uh, negative 16, which makes this a negative 3 if you add, and then 6, and 0 is the remainder. Hey, that's actually special. But we'll get there in the next lesson. Therefore, the quotient is... Now, if I take my quartic and divide it by a linear, I know my quotient will be a cubic when I think of the division statement. But it makes sense. So cubic term, x cubed term, x squared, x constant term. So beautiful, working out beautifully. There you go. Okay. So the last example here, you see the divisor is 3x plus 2. Like I said, I don't advise you to do it, uh, but I'll show it to you anyways. So it's actually negative two-thirds, okay? Negative two-thirds, I'm going to write the coefficients of my dividend. 2, 11, 16. So bring down the 12. 12 times negative two-thirds, that's negative 8. And then adding, oops, negative 6 times negative two-thirds, that's positive 4. And that's 15. And then 15 times negative 2 thirds is negative 10. And then you add that. And then the remainder is 6. Okay, so the quotient here. 
Why do I not advise students to uh, use synthetic division? Because the quotient you get is different. Okay, this quotient is not the correct answer because what happened is what you're really doing is you're no longer dividing by 3x plus 2. You're dividing by x plus 2 thirds. Okay, so you're no longer dividing by 3x plus 2, which means this is not the real answer. Okay, so I'll try to give you a good analogy. Let's think about 36. Okay. Okay, if I take 36 and I ask you to divide it by 12, okay, 36 divided by 12 is obviously 3. Now, but then, let's, for whatever reason, let's say you change my question. You're like, I don't want to do 36 divided by 12. I'm going to take 36 and divide it by, let's see, you're taking, a th when you go from 3x plus 2 to x plus 2 thirds, you're taking a third of the intended divisor, a third of the intended divisor. So take this 12 and you're gonna take a third of it, right? So 12 divided by three would be four. So what do you know? If you change my divisor, you take a third of what my divisor is, you actually triple the quotient, right? If you take a third of my divisor, you get triple the quotient. So this is triple of what it should really be. Okay, this is not the correct answer. Therefore, the quotient is, so you take this and divide it by three. It's three times of what it should be. So divide it by three, which means it's four X squared minus two X plus five. Right, divide by three, divide by three, perfect. So I, I, most students who do this, they, um, they just copy the, the quotient here and they say, so they would say that the quotient is 12x squared minus 6x plus 15, uh, but it certainly isn't. Um, and I tried to really prove to you why using real numbers. So like I said, I really don't recommend students doing it if the divisor is not in the form of x minus k, okay? Just use long division. Um, and, and you'll get the answer correct. You'll, much, you'll be much more likely to get the correct answer. But uh, to be honest with you, most of the time when you are uh, dividing polynomials, um, the factors will be in the form of x minus k. Okay, I'm not saying all of them will be, but for the most part, they will be in the form of x minus k. Okay, so hopefully you appreciate synthetic division.